Alright, listen up! The Akatsuki is on our ass. I'm sure some of you do not like each other, but guess what? I don't give a shit. The Akatsuki have violated the sand, stone, mist, cloud, and leaf. And since we have this alliance now, that means we've been violated five times. Plus, they stabbed my best friend's future wife. So let's stop bitching and kick the ass! I'm about to end this man's whole career. Was popping. Today, your boy decided to cover when anime villains get jumped. And let me tell you, some <laughs> are bad. So if this video gets 1,000 likes within the first 24 hours, I'll do another. And hey, if you like the video, Subscribe. I'm uh I'm gonna start the video now. Now Itadori's mentality is hit rock bottom because Mahito blew a hole in Kugasaki's face. But unfortunately, Mahito did not give a shit about Itadori's feelings. Bro pulled up on him like he needed money and hit him with a black flash. And that caused him to start flying around like a loose RB sandwich, but then Mahito caught him like he was Piccolo. Then threw his ass on a wall just to prove a point. And you already know every good sandwich needs some seasoning, so he kicks Itadori in the face. And then he starts talking to Itadori with all that Japanese no jutsu saying, you know what? We're the same, but I don't think bro is listening. So after all the Japanese business, he trying to send Itadori to the purgatory. Mmm, bars. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, let's keep going. But thankfully, Toto pulled up like the Powerpuff Girl he is and saved the day. And I don't know why I'm acting like I wasn't squealing when I heard the background music. That shit was going crazy. So But sadly, this still has Itadori still laying on the ground because all his friends are dead. So Toto tells him, My brother, they'd want us to kick his ass. And a light bulb just went off in Itadori's head. That shit just activated a trap card. Bro was ready to fight. So Maito starts running up on him with Twin Malice ready to play whack-a-mole. Then tries hitting Toto with the Tom and Jerry Classic. But he disappears like Houdini and Itadori shows up with a facelift. Bro really started smiling because he thought it was his turn, but the combo wasn't even finished. Toto did a layup with Itadori's body and slam dunks Maito through the concrete. And after getting slapped up with style, my boy starts running. We gotta run! Maito starts acting up thinking he's Naruto with that Shadow Clone no Jutsu. Bro really tries catching Itadori with those big ass hands but misses. And now it's just a full on team battle. Everybody's swinging. Bro, look at Minato. He's fighting so damn hard he turned into a coffee table. Then hits him with this 40 foot vertical and starts throwing worms. Itadori and Toto start posing up because they know they're really like that. But Maito decided fuck it. Bigger is better. He summoned a goddamn train. Oh shit. Now at this point in the fight, Toto and Itadori get split up. And I want you paying attention to how many bodies Mahito catches while trying to kill Toto. Alright, so we see Mahito turn somebody into a sword. Which means sword equals body. And bro ends up throwing one, two, three, god damn, ten swords. And he got a little two-piece on the side. I know being a background character in JJK must be ass. Like imagine dying just because you wanted to take a convenient form of transportation. The forecast should have said Sunny with a slight chance of death. But Tojo was wasn't playing around. Bro caught the swords between his fingers. Tell me it don't look like he posing up right now. And Maito tries getting a cheap shot with his third arm, but Toto disappears and sends him flying. So Maito realizes he can't win the one-on-one -on -one either, so he said, going up. As bro starts running for the second time, Itadori and Toto link up again. And they did not wait for any dialogue. Itadori ends up throwing a rock that looks like it's moving at the speed of sound. Toto ends up switching places with this bitch and looks like he just unlocked the smash ball. He cocks his arm back like it's a shotgun. You can already tell, this bitch is gonna have recoil. <laughs> Some MAPPA animator must have quit. Imagine doing all that work just for the fight to make no progress. Like at that point, you might as well go buy a journal because you need therapy. Nevertheless, we finally get to the final portion of the fight. And at this current time, Maito has lost his marbles. Bro sounds like Broly. All he can think in his head to say is Itadori. Itadori, Itadori, Itadori. Like, my God, bro, somebody bring him juice. And Toto starts feeling low-key salty because he's just like, 
what about me? So he ends up clapping Mahito into Itadori's place. Pause. And Itadori tries kicking him across the face. But instead of taking the hit, he just snaps his own neck. Then this snail pops out of nowhere and starts playing jumping jacks with Itadori and Toto. And Mahito turned himself into a garden gnome. Bro thought he was Sonic. Gotta go fast. But he ends up finding his lower half and sends a sacrifice to fight Toto. And Toto thought this was gonna be an easy fight. But instead of giving it the one hit KO, Toto gets his intrusive thoughts slapped out of him. Bro has Nani written all over his face. Here we go! Now, after skipping the jumping that Toto endured, and I say endured very lightly, bro made quick work of those two, or things, I don't, I don't know what pronouns they use, Toto ends up meeting up with Itadori again. So Maito got to thinking and realized, you know what, Toto should probably die first, which from a jumping standpoint makes perfect sense, I just don't know why the idea came up now. Either way, Maito pops his domain expansion enough not to piss Sukuna off, and I mean, thank God he didn't, bro would've split his shit, but enough for Toto to lose a hand, so Maito starts putting pressure on on Toto. Hits him in the gut so hard he starts spewing out blood. And bro even goes for the finishing move. But just when Maito thought it was all over, Toto dead ass turns into a high school anime girl. Like this man is really beating Maito's ass while thinking he's wearing a skirt. I uh, I think we're done with this one. Iris is currently walking up for the biggest ass whooping of her life. Obviously, she doesn't know that yet, but because she's the Empire's strongest sword, she kind of needs to win. So now she's facing off against Kagano, and the viscosity of the atmosphere is thick. I'm talking like maple syrup thick. But this ain't the time to act like a bitch, so she gets ready. So the fight begins, and Iris gets decapitated. And this is just tragic to watch. Like, the ref just put his hand down, and you've already died in battle. Shit, I don't even know if you can call it a battle. I'd call it a world record. But Kagano must have been feeling merciful, because it just turned out to be an illusion. Sadly, that didn't stop Iris from shitting herself because she jumped back so fast, she tripped. Plus, the whole time she's getting mentally violated, the crowd behind her is talking shit. So she does what any anime protagonist does when they need power. She just starts screaming. <laughs> Damn, Kagano looks bored as shit. Plus now Iris is running up toward him with her finishing move. But Kagano turned his hands into butter. That shit literally slipped off of his body and onto the ground. Then proceeds to do a spin move and choke the shit out of Iris. Like she got fucked up so fast she turned into a background character. And not to mention while all this is going on, the princess just shanked the king. And I won't get into the story too deep. Just know that Mr. Asshat, and yes that is his name, was pretty much brainwashing the king. Plus uh, getting freaky with the queen, but oh my. God, let's not even get into that. So we fast forward and Kagano busts in through the front window. And that makes Mr. Asshat scared, so he commences the jumping. But for some reason, Beatrix takes it upon herself to become a sacrifice. And I'm saying sacrifice because Kagano's hands are bisexual. He don't give a fuck. Nevertheless, they start fighting. And it looked like Beatrix was doing something at the beginning, but it was really just Kagano playing with his food. Like, he's really just using instant transmission on a normal-ass person. I mean, she is a sword master, but like, compared to Kagano, dog, that's a feat. Nevertheless, Iris comes in for backup, and she looks mad as shit. She pulling out her sword like she the main protagonist. But Kagano just takes this time to put her pride in the blender. He deadass told her that her sword is just a crutch. She deadass just turns her sword into a lightsaber and swings that bitch. But even with all that range, she missed. I'm starting to think the only thing getting jumped is Iris's reputation, but she just has way too much pride to take an L. So she decides to take the fight onto a public road. Obviously, public safety is no longer a concern. Beatrix tries going in for a sneak attack, but that shit don't work. Iris uses her sword like a baseball bat and throws Kagano's body on the side of an apartment building. But Kagano must have been a masochist because he started smiling. Plus, for some reason, he decided to turn his swords into crowbars, then jumped on Iris's body like she's a Goomba and somehow managed to grab Beatrix's sword in between the crowbar like all this finesse at this point is at the level of being plain disrespectful and you can just tell that iris and beatrix are desperate like the entire time beatrix is trying to get a hit in she just annihilates the entire neighborhood at some point you need to put the sword down like this is just friendly fire like you could walk outside and execute a bitch on site it'd be the same thing and as if bro wasn't already hard to hit he starts water bending iris once again doesn't know what to do so she throws a fireball no jutsu she definitely knew she was 
was gonna miss that shit because she's already behind Kagano. But Kagano knew she was gonna miss that shit and come up behind him, so he gives her a taste of his foot. She got kicked so hard that the foot fetish got imprinted onto her face. And while she's getting the taste of dirt out of her mouth, Beatrix is pressing Kagano right behind a crowd. Bro, every person staring at the water just saw Iris suck on toes. Also, why does it seem like nobody notices that the town is getting blown the fuck up? There is terrorism happening on the streets and nobody gives a shit. But hey, on the bright side, Iris came back for her third ass beating. And for once, Beatrix and Iris have actually decided to form a plan of attack. Which I understand. I mean, at this point, Iris has been traumatized multiple times. Some things I don't even know if she can come back from. Nevertheless, they go for the do or die strategy. I'm about to end this man's whole career. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Hey, no cap, but these two are eating feet like I eat Takis, just like with a mouthful. And you'd think after all this, Beatrix and Iris would just stay down. But no, Iris had to say some shit. <laughs> That's why he's the goat! The goat! Now, I don't usually watch the Fate series, but when I do, it's really easy to figure out what's going on. Because it seems to always follow the same pattern. Like, step one is find the villain. Step two is rehabilitate the ass with a thorough jumping. And of course, today's patient is Quetzalcoatl. And she's pretty much this deity that's in an evil alliance. So, of course, if we follow the pattern, uh, that means it's time to die. Or, you know, at least that's what you'd expect. Either way, Fujimaru and his gang are ready to crucify her ass. And their odds of winning look pretty good. They got five people versus... Versus one, but man, I am not a fortune teller. Let me tell you. For starters, Quetzalcoatl almost annihilates Fujimaru within the first move. So Ishtar tries to push her back shooting light beams, but she can cut light. By the way, wearing a bikini during a jumping session is crazy. To be fair though, her other teammates' fits are not perfect. We got one dude who's dressing up as a tiger, and then the other one looks like she's trying to cosplay the Illuminati. But goddamn, can they fight? I mean, Tigger and Miss Illuminati look like they could rob me in broad daylight. But that doesn't actually mean shit for Quetzalcoatl. She looks Looks like IP man out there. She kicked the shit out of the dude with the one piece, then turns around and grabs a scythe between her armpit and kicks the shit out of the other girl. And after the first exchange, she realized, damn, I'm really running y'all's pockets. And the saddest part is that not a single one of them could deny that statement. So Quetzalcoatl decides not to use her weapon. So she starts running at Fujimaru again, but Fujimaru was feeling like a bitch that day, so he commands another person to take the hit. That only stopped the inevitable, and she jumps on the shield like it's a trampoline and starts heading towards Anna. She really grabbed her scythe like it's a cigarette, then finishes the job with one of the dirtiest finishing moves I've ever seen. <laughs> She really just put Anna's head between her thighs and slam dunked her face into the ground. Bro, I don't care what kind of anime physique or diet you're on, you are dying in that situation. Do you see how her body is levitating off the ground? That is her soul ascending. Like she is the first person in the world to do the bridge with no hands. And the craziest part is that Fujimaru just watched it happen. And Ishtar is just as bad. Like she's posted up behind Quetzalcoatl and Quetzalcoatl ain't even moving. Shoots two bullets to the back of her head and misses. Like, why even do all that fancy shit if you're gonna miss? Ishtar really started acting up like she's that kid with the bear at 50 cal and starts spraying that bitch. So Quetzalcoatl starts running up a wall like she's America's ninja warrior and kicks Ishtar to the ground. But she's gotta get down safely somehow, so she uses Ishtar's body as an airbag. And once again, Fujimaru just watches. Explain to me why the fuck this man has dialogue every single time he watches one of his teammates get bodied. Like, all it does is causes another one of them to die like bro just starts yapping and then the furry is ready to fight also i completely forgot that jaguar was a girl so you know let me just fix that before her immediate death
Bruh, Quetzalcoatl has Jaguar doing photosynthesis. Like, she's doing a handstand with her neck. So Ishtar pulls out her bow and arrow and starts shooting at Quetzalcoatl. But somehow, for the second time, proceeds to miss a stationary target. Which is honestly just sorry as hell. I mean, she got her fucking eyes closed. Nevertheless, Anna and Mash pop out out of the smoke trying to hit her from both sides. But Quetzalcoatl has the power of a hydraulic press. She grabs both their weapons, then weaves both of their attacks and drop kicks Anna. Turns around 180 degrees and hits Mash with the Killer Bee special. <laughs> Well, now that Quetzalcoatl has went through the entire lineup, you'd think Fujimaru would take his turn. Yeah. Well, that, that didn't exactly happen. So for some reason, Fujimaru thought he was playing Fortnite and jumps off a magical cape with no parachute. And I thought this meant he was gonna gear up for a special move, but no, he just knocks himself out. So in conclusion, Fujimaru jumped himself. Can you imagine how mad Gara must have been after finding out that Madara Uchiha is his first opponent after creating the Shinobi Alliance? Like half of these people want to kill each other, yet you want us to face our greatest op? Like this entire alliance needs some team building exercises before we start throwing kunai. Cause shit's not looking too good. Madara obviously doesn't give a fuck about nobody's life. He already ready to fight. Bro's consuming chakra and the battle hasn't even started. Tell me why the Shinobi Alliance is sweating so damn much. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. They know they're gonna die. Like, even Gara tried to stop the whole thing from happening, but he just sped things up. And that just caused the Shinobi Alliance to start screaming as they're heading toward their impending doom. Bro, when I tell you that Madara was creating orphans at a world record pace, I'm saying Madara is creating orphans at a world record pace. Bro is out on the field looking like a weed whacker. But while Bro was choking somebody out, Tamari busts a move and sends them flying. That just pisses Madara off and he starts a forest fire without no force. This ain't angle really makes it look like these people are fighting a natural disaster. Also, using the Sharingan inside a smoke screen is definitely cheating. Like, they all know they're fighting Madara, yet they don't know who the fuck is hitting them. Garo tries to do damage control and just throws him out of the smoke. While he's running, the third Tsuchikage and Naruto are outside trying to hit him with a combo. Of course, Naruto's screaming, Rasengan! But Madara Susano was ready to cook. Now we see Naruto charging up Sage Chakra while the rest of the team is playing a friendly game of, well, don't fucking die. I wanted to say whack but Maito already did that. Gara starts using the same move and pulls Madara out of the Susano. And now with his Sage Chakra, Naruto screams, Rasen Shuriken! And blows his ass up. Bro, plot armor is truly a bitch. Instead of taking damage, he got stronger. I'm not even surprised Naruto looks flabbergasted. He got robbed. Plus, Kabuto's just glazing the upgrades he did on Madara's body. But Madara's telling him, bitch, you must have forgotten why they called me a god. And I don't know how the hell this is a jutsu, but bro summons a meteor. The Shinobi Alliance has lost all hope. But the third Tsuchikage schizophrenic ass said he's finna go catch it. Everybody's thinking his old ass just turned suicidal. But he starts pressing his dome to the dome and screams, OH SHIT MY BACK! And with a little finesse from Gara, they actually stopped that shit. Too bad there was a second one. 